wow, it took me so long to get a video out. That's probably because I actually finished the tractor. Look at that. It looks so fantastic. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. You see this. I may have lied about fixing the tractor. Uh, no, I didn't finish it, unfortunately. Uh, but welcome back to my series where I'm fixing my great grandfather's Ford 601 Workmaster diesel tractor. In the previous video, we actually just put in the tachometer and then I went radio silent. That's because I drilled a hole through my finger, I had to have surgery, and work got really busy. But during that time, I've been filming as much as I can little bits and pieces of the project itself. So, with that, Let's go ahead and jump into what we've been doing so far. Let's get started. Okay, so it appears that I cannot get the tractor to start. I think I need to work on the starter and some other things. But since I am in the process of restoring this thing and I just got that sand blaster, I'm gonna try. See if I can't remove the steering wheel. Okay, this thing is probably pretty hot at this point. We can't get like a pair of vice grips on it. Let's see how hard this is going to be. Okay, oh, not going to work. No, oh, got it. Yeah goes to show when you burn the heck out of it and get stuff off for sure. Don't want to grab it with my hands. I almost just grabbed it with my hands. Okay. It's not that hot, but it's still hot to the touch. Okay. Sweet. Actually don't know how to get this thing off now. And let's see if I can just tug on it not fall backwards in the process. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to Google this. Okay, I have consult, I've consulted the forums and it appears that this thing is going to be very rusted. They recommend using some kind of pulling thing that hooks onto the spokes, but I don't have one of those. All right. That was good. So unfortunately, my USB drive corrupted all the footage I had of taking this thing off, but it was pretty simple. All I ended up doing was spraying this with some WD-40, hitting it with some heat. Yes, I know something like Croil or the acetone and transmission fluid works a lot better, but WD-40 is all I had. But then what I ended up doing was going to AutoZone and renting one of these gear pullers here. And I'll show you what I did with it. First, I removed all of the little hooks here. And you'll probably guess what I'm gonna do next. All right, so I've gotten all of the little hooks off. And you'll imagine here, if you look, we've got three spokes on the wheel and we've got three of these arms. So like I said, you'll probably guess what I'm gonna go ahead and do next, so let's jump to it. All right. Okay, go ahead and we'll put it, the knot into place. I will just do it for the others. So as you can see, got all of these spokes. This is the setup that we have. We got it around the three spokes. Now, whenever we tighten this down, it's going to push down on the main drive shaft of the steering wheel and it's going to pull up our steering wheel so i've already taken this off and it definitely won't be this easy but as you turn it will lift up the steering wheel and this was pretty difficult i had to give it the beans pretty much to to get it completely off but once i pulled it off you can see those splines this is the reason why it's so difficult to take off is that these splines here these little flat surfaces, these, these straight surfaces really grab onto the wheel. 
like really grab on and it gets all rusted. You can tell the inside is quite rusted and those little fins there dig into the wheel and they just rust shut. And there's a spring that comes out of here that you'll have to keep in mind. So there will be a spring you'll have to take a look at, but that's how you get it off. Okay, so your steering wheel most definitely will not come off that easy as you just saw. This thing took a lot of force, a lot of heat, a lot of heat, and it eventually popped off once we got the right tool. So, unfortunately the footage got corrupted, but I pulled the gauge cluster off, pulled all the gauges off, went ahead and slipped it off the top here, and now it's time to start sandblasting, priming, and painting the parts. I'm really looking forward to it, and I hope you are too. So, let's jump to that. Okay. Okay, I have two problems. The first is that this air compressor is not working. I need to fix it. I think it's one of the capacitors in this motor. That's what my uncle told me. So I'll need to take a look and see if I can fix it. But even if I did fix it, I still don't think it's big enough to support this sandblaster continuously. So what I'm gonna end up doing is call my buddy Michael and see if I can use his nice brand new giant air compressor. So let's give him a call and see if we can head down. Now my buddy Michael has some cool old tractors, a Ford 2000, I believe he also has a Ford 8N or 9N, among some other older cars and some friends that like to say hello. But before we did the sandblasting, we decided to have a little bit of fun. Don't work too. Well, now that that was out of the way, we decided to hook up his air compressor to his sandblasting cabinet so I could get some of the tiny parts sandblasted. Now, then after that, we laid out all the parts on the table. We made sure they were nice and clean using some isopropyl alcohol and then we got to priming. It was pretty yeah. easy. I was a little bit scared of doing it first. It's kind of like ripping a Band-Aid off, yeah. but Michael went ahead and started spray painting them and I took over from there. One thing that I try to remember to do when I paint these parts is not to sweep the spray paint can. I try to keep it sort of parallel to the surface so that certain parts of the part don't get more paint than others. Now these parts turned out pretty good on this first priming run. Now you can kind of tell there's some pitting and whatnot on the surface of these parts. So what I'm going to have to do is add a little bit of glazing putty into these little pitting spots. And the next thing that I'm going to do is sand off that glazing putty and then I can finally do the final pass of spray primer and then of course we'll move to painting. Yes, it's time. It's finally time. I'm painting the tractor, finally. Well, not the whole tractor. This is just an example. I'll tell you why I did that in a second. But look at how great this part turned out. This is the headlight of the tractor. I'm super excited uh, with how it turned out. There's a couple of bubbles and stuff here and there that I think I need to just sand out. And I need to add a clear coat on this in the future and then maybe buff it out. But that might be a bit overkill. We'll see about that. But of course, after sanding and priming those parts, I needed to get them painted. It's, it's that time. So I covered everything in plastic wrap, as you can see here. I wanted to cover my CNC so it didn't cover, get covered in red. And I used this HVLP, high volume, low pressure, central pneumatic Harbor Freight special paint gun. My grandfather lent this to me and it came in really handy. Now, the paint that I ended up using was Magic Tractor Paint. I found it at tractor supply. You can buy it in big gallon jugs or little quart jugs as well. But I also purchased a catalyst hardener and a reducer. And the reason why you want the catalyst hardener obviously is because I've heard that it makes the paint harder and it makes it a lot more resistant to UV rays from the sun. Now the reducer is just to make it a lot easier for it to spray through your HVLP spray gun. Now, again, I put all the plastic down, hung the parts up, Yeah, first try.
I love being tall sometimes. I don't know if it's worth the bad knees or what. And it got the painting. There goes nothing. I'm going to turn it back now. As I've said many a time before. First. Now, that little red cartridge at the bottom of the spray gun is a dryer. It dries the air coming out of the air compressor. I live in Alabama. It's hot. It's humid. There's probably at least six inches of water probably in my air compressor right now. So adding that is an absolute necessity. I'm really happy with how the first coat went on. This stuff goes on really smooth and it really didn't drip as much as I thought it would. Can't really tell any kind of drips from what I could see. Now, I think I didn't prep the surface properly. I don't think I got all the oils and waxes or, or whatever off of the parts because there were little, I think they're called fish eyes that showed up on some of the parts and you can't quite tell them on this part, but this is the second coat. That was the first coat. Now the second coat, what I ended up doing to remedy those little fish eyes was to sand it with 2000 grit sandpaper. And you can see here it left sort of a matte finish and that gave the next coat something really nice to stick on. So I ended up spraying the next coat And as you can see here, the parts turned out fantastic. Now, the first time I mixed up the paint, I mixed way too much. I mixed, I think seven or eight ounces of paint, fluid ounces, and it was just way too much. I only ended up using barely half of it. So the next time I actually cut that in half and I still had a little bit left over. So I went ahead and took the opportunity to just kind of paint this guy. Um, I'm gonna sandblast it completely off, but I just really, couldn't help myself. I wanted to see what the panel would look like. And as you can tell, I completely ran out of paint uh, as I finished the front and got towards the back. But again, the parts turned out fantastic. And of course, it was time to then start on some of these bigger panels now that I got the painting down and I got the air compressor working again. So of course, I wanted to get my grandfather's reaction. So the next time that I visited them, I took the gauge cluster mount and the front emblem, the two pieces that you saw being painted previously, and I took him to get his reaction. So this is this is his reaction. All right, I want to, I want to show you something. What do you think about that? Yeah. Pretty nice, huh? Oh yeah, so that's the front, and then <laughs> here's the, obviously the gauge cluster. It's got about two coats on it, but, you know, so, <laughs> looks good, looks doesn't it? Good, huh? It, uh, I was sitting there sanding it. Before I painted it, I had primer on it, I had, you know, Bondo and the, uh, 
the primer and I kept sanding it. I probably sanded this thing three times to get it out. <laughs> I mean, so. I'm glad to see that he was really happy with it and I'm really excited as this tractor continues to get better and better what his reaction will be. Okay, so this video has taken me so long that I finally got the air compressor to work and I was then able to use the sandblaster that my grandfather gave me. Now, I did it outside over the course of two different nights. The first night, I decided to focus on this piece here. Now, I ran into some issues. I ran into a couple clogs in the sandblaster, and then it was at that moment that the immortal words of my grandfather rang in my ears, you need to sift your sand. I have to screen the sand, which I did not do. Sure to listen to Grandpa. So that's what I ended up doing is I took the screen from my shed here whenever I put the AC unit in and started sifting the sand. Now, another thing that I also didn't have was a tarp. So I wasn't able to reuse a lot of the sand from that first night. Now, if you'll notice, I'm wearing a full face mask respirator. I got it on Amazon for pretty cheap. And those are, I believe, NIOSH little air filters on either side. Now, after that first night, I was a little bit worried that I had ruined the mask, but I had a solution to that for the next night. Okay, so I thought I actually ruined this face mask that I had. It got pretty matte. It sort of got matte with all the sand hitting it from when I previously did the sandblasting. So what I ended up doing was putting some tape on the front, some packing tape. The adhesive filled in all the little pores that the sand made in the acrylic and it cleared it right up. But it also makes a cool, um, well, I guess, I don't know, cool, but it makes a disposable front sort of screen protector for these goggles. So when this gets matte from the sand, I'll just be able to peel it off, put some new on, and it'll be good as new. So that's just kind of a thing that I did. We'll see how well it works out. I'm not, not too sure, um, but I'm just giving it a try. So after I got everything set up, it was time to start sandblasting some of these larger parts. So went ahead and did the part that goes over top of the gas tank. Of course, I could not resist doing this. So yeah, if you can, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to follow along with some of the projects that I've been doing. Right now, I'm mainly focusing on the tractor, but I hope to have a lot more fun projects as things go along, if I can find the time. So this time, I actually did have a tarp and I was able to save some of the sand as it was used up. The only issue is that the sandblaster doesn't hold enough sand to be able to get rid of all of the paint of one entire part. And so I would need to sweep it up, get it cleaned up, and I even had to add a little bit more sand. I was using some play sand that I got at the local hardware store. It cost about maybe five, six bucks for a 50 pound bag. And I used that same screen that I did for the previous night. Now I'm doing it a little bit differently. I'm actually putting the screen at an angle and I'm pouring the sand on top of it. So I'm hoping that the big chunks sort of hop down that screen and aren't able to actually go through the screen bits and the smaller sand will be able to go through the screen. Now I'm not 100% sure if that is efficient, but as you can see, it actually appears to have worked really well. Okay, I'm not 100% sure if that method works, but it seems to be working. I don't know if having it tilted, you might say, oh, well, he's losing like half his sand. Well, okay, here's the, here's the comparison. Here is the stuff that's falling. And here is the stuff that is falling in the bucket here, let's see. I think the comparison is pretty uh, pretty obvious. So yeah, I think that that method actually does work. So should have enough here. Oh yeah, it's way smoother, way smoother sand than than this stuff. All right, time to dump it in.
So as I was going along, sand blasting, everything was going fine, and then all of a sudden, the compressor cut out. Well, I think my air compressor just died. I was having trouble starting up, and then I think it just stalled. It is hot. All right, well, I didn't get a lot done, a little bit done, but the air compressor, it stalled out. I think the fuse might have popped in it, so I'm gonna let the motor cool down so I can't do anything else for the day. So, guess we'll continue later. Now, this piece is the piece that the gauge cluster sits on top of. I needed to pull this off and get it sandblasted. I need to get it primed and cleaned up a little bit more, but I need to fix these sort of cracks that are in the metal. What I think happened was over time, this piece got wiggled back and forth and it caused some metal fatigue in these spots right here. So basically what I'm thinking about doing is getting a sheet of metal that my grandfather gave me and I'm going to cut and bend it to shape inside here. I'm gonna go ahead and weld these pieces together and then spot weld that sheet of metal behind this so that it strengthens this up a lot more. So hopefully I can get that done. That's probably gonna take the longest amount of time because I don't have a welder. I'm gonna to need to find somebody with a welder who can help me out with it. Maybe I'll ask Michael to help me out and that'll probably be in a future video. So I'm excited to do that because once this gets done, I can start putting back all the electronics. I can put all the gauges back on and I can actually start to use the tractor again. Okay, so this is the current state of the tractor. The electronics are off, steering wheel's off, the gauge cluster's off, and it's kind of just in pieces right now. The panels still need to be primed and painted. Now, I can focus on these fenders, the wheels, a little bit later in sort of the fall, maybe, when I don't actually have to work in the yard with the tractor. I really want to get it to the point to where it is actually up and running, to where I can actually use it, so I'll be focusing on the electronics, getting all these body panels that I took off back on, and we can focus on things like the steering wheel and again, the other wheels and panels and painting uh, a little bit later. So with that, thanks again so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. It is done, it is painted, it is, oh, let me. Really happy with how it turns out. You see this, Wow, that looks, I mean, bonkers.